you're busy, you've got a decent practice, but nobody wants to be decent. You want to be great, and you want to have a great practice. So how did the most productive, profitable dentist in the nation balance real life, work, and profits, and somehow make it all seem fun? Well, it comes down to simple, everyday practices. So grab a lunch, join us as we chat with top clinicians and influencers to discover their formula for uncommon success. Are you ready? Then it's time to explore everyday practices with Vicki McManus-Peterson and Dr. Chad Johnson. Hey, everybody. This is Chad Johnson with Everyday Practices, the newest podcast of late 2018. And I'm here with the already legendary Corey Glenn. Dr. Corey Glenn, thanks for joining us, man. Sure, man. How's it going? Good. So uh, along with all the listeners right now, uh, I'm... uh, just catching everybody up. We've already been talking for a good 10 minutes, just chewing the fat. And I kind of wanted to uh, kick around the ideas that uh, we've been talking about, but it was mostly just, you know, kind of chewing the fat as they say in Tennessee. Uh, yep. So uh, question number one, I first ran across you and I hadn't met you yet, but uh, with part of the Cirrhic mentor group. So on C docs is when I first ran right. across you and you were, uh, you had this cool little logo on the side and then come to find out you were uh, posting this kind of stuff on dental town too. But uh, you kind of got to be known as dental McIver for anyone that's been under the tech rock and doesn't know your name. So this is kind of an iconic interview and I was cool about talking with you until now we're recording and making this a big deal. But uh, <laughs> so tell me kind of uh, about your, your start in dentistry and, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, man. So I, uh, I graduated in 08. I did a residency that uh, afforded me the ability to take Panky to place some implants. And I had a lot of time just to kill doing lab work and making up stuff. I only saw like four or five patients a day. So there's a lot of dead time that I could just play around. So, uh, you know, I kind of got, I got to have a love for lab work and started playing with a lot of that. And then I got out of, uh, into practice. And in my little town, it's pretty rural, pretty low income. And I realized I just, no one could afford the stuff I was selling. You know, yeah. so I had to figure out a way to get my costs down on everything if I wanted to get to do any of that. Thing. And so that, that's where the MacGyver stuff came in. It's just basically one, I'm, I'm a, I'm a redneck engineer. And so I like to try and figure stuff out. And two, I like the lab work aspect. And then three, just trying to get the cost down. So I, I combined all those. And, uh, you know, that's just really been a big driving force in my practice, it's trying to figure out how I could do things, still keep it at a high level. Um, but maybe come at them from a unique way to to avoid all the really high cost and time uh, associated with, you know, doing it the normal way. So, Which yeah, undersells that's, that's exactly what you're doing because when you call it redneck, I, it's still super high tech. I mean, some well, of the people, high tech. <laughs> right. Because some of the people that are going to be listening to this, you need to go to coreyglenn.org and check out his stuff. If you've not uh, been following him on the, the uh, what is that? The 360 uh, blue sky. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a few blue sky bio Facebook groups. Yeah. The 365 digital dentistry, the blue yes. sky bio users group. There's a few I post on. Yeah. So you know what, when we post this on our Facebook page, I'll try and make sure that we link those as well. So that way people can find those and join. But, uh, what's, uh, what's amazing is, you know, as I followed this probably for, uh, about four years now uh, of your stuff is, um, just the, 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 the high tech stuff that people don't even know exists. Some of the people that are listening to this, and, and I think we could end the podcast right now if we said, okay, if this is about everyday practices, and if we were to find a clinical pearl, you already mentioned it. It's just, man, my patients weren't able to say yes. And so I found them a way to say yes by making sure to lower the cost, but you weren't necessarily lowering the quality because you, you have 3D, uh, 3D, imaging scanners and I'm not talking Cirrus scanners cause you, you've got that kind of stuff too, but you've got, what is it called when you've got the, the, uh, the, when it 3d images your models even. Oh, the, that, well, I've got desktop scanners and intraoral scanners and then the 3d printers and comb. Yeah. Kind because, of four go-to pieces of technology. Yeah, People have heard of Cirrus. They might have heard of the, the 3d scanners. I mean, of, of course the uh, Cirrus, but what I'm talking about that I'm sh- seeing with yours, is almost like this Elmo kind of. Uh, yeah, that, it's more a desktop scanner, like what a lab would use. So, exactly. But you're so using you those. I want to jump into the really high cost of an intraoral scanner. This is a really, it's, it's your cheapest entry point into digital dentistry because you can buy one of these scanners for 5,000 bucks and you can scan all your models and stuff, obviously, but a really cool application that gave us near immediate return on investment was 
Um, it's a long story, but I had Sarac for five years or so. Ended up selling that because it just wasn't fitting my practice model yeah. anymore. And we went back to PBS, but it, you know, then I had to go back to the whole long, drawn-out lab process. My cost on the restorations went up. So when we got this scanner, we actually just started taking our triple trays, but then straight out of the mouth, and we would sit the triple tray into the scanner, and it would scan both sides, and within five minutes, I had the same ending point as what I would have had from an intraoral scanner, which yes. is two digital models, and I could fire those off to my lab, and it took my, my cost, uh, it knocked like $45 off of the cost if they had to pour up models and everything, and it took my turnaround time from two weeks to three days. So exactly. that alone, I mean, we paid for the scanner in like, you know, three months. It, it's only like 5000 bucks, so it's really hard to oh, go. Oh, that's interesting that. to know. Yeah. But the cool thing is too, you, number one, you know, that cost, that's cool that you, you know, some people would be like, yeah, I'm sure it kind of paid for itself after, you know, 10 days or three years. They, they don't quite know, but you're like, well, it's $45 per scan. Now what's cool about that too, is you could in essence, send that to any lab around the world. So if you wanted to try the hot dog guy that you went to CE and you were like, you know what, I'll just send them this stuff. Are these STL files that you were sending to them or? Yeah, they're just up there, up, an upper and a lower STL in the case of a, uh, a triple tray. And, you know, one side's got your prep. And so you just send those off. And anyone that's using a digital software like uh, ExoCAD or 3Shape or uh, Serona InLab, those will all work with an STL. And uh, most labs, that's how they're doing things now. Yeah. Wow. And, you know, you've been working, you were on the cutting edge. I mean, if everyone's got a new fancy term for it. It's like when I hear people talk about, you know, looking at things from a 20,000 foot view, and then I hear a 40,000, and then I hear a 60,000 foot view, it's always changing. So cutting edge becomes bleeding edge, becomes the knife bleeding edge, whatever you want to call it, you're there. And it was a few years ago that you were trying to work on digital dentures, and I'm just now seeing them pop up on um, on the uh, Form 2 emails that, right. you know, are saying, hey, you know, we've got the resin for it. You've been doing that for Two or three years? Uh, maybe two years. Yeah, but, but you've been working on it. One year since Blue Sky, we've we've released software that will do it. So it's much more streamlined. It, it, in the past, I was doing it all in Mesh Mixer, and it was way advanced level. It, it was not realistic. Right, because you were saying that, like, hey, watch this video. I've seen your YouTube stuff, too. I mean, I, I'm basically a creeper of yours. So I'm watching these videos, and you're, and you're like, well, this took me 10 hours but the point isn't that it'll take the clinician 10 hours because the second time it'll take me five hours and the third time it'll take me two hours. And eventually I'll get it down to 40 minutes. Now all of a sudden it's, it's available. Right. You come to my course, I'll show you how to do it. Yeah. And the, and the goal really, I mean, in, even if it's taken that much time on the front end to learn it, it, it becomes a question of, is it really worth it? And so that's right. where the software comes in. You know, we, with the blue sky software, we've really been trying to drive down the simplicity of it where you can be a relative newbie and come in and maybe just watch some YouTube videos and not even need a course. You know, just take what you already know about dentures and just change the aspect of how you're doing a few steps to software versus analog. Yeah. And it's that little switch that just makes all the difference in the world and brings your time and your cost way down. That's you know, awesome. I've set denture tea for all my classmates during school and man, I was taking two hours or so to, to set teeth and that same setup now in the, in the software, it takes me, two minutes. I mean, right. it's crazy. So right. um, that, that's the biggest thing. I, I don't like technology just for the sake of technology. I want to leverage that to either drive down my cost or increase my efficiency. And okay. Well, I won't tell Baron that, that because I think he does like technology just because of technology. Well, I've been there too, but <laughs> you know, if you're, if you are going to run a business with it, you kind of have to take it out of that hobby realm into to practical. So those are the two things I want. And if it can do those things and not suffer in the quality category, then I'm all about it. Let me ask, where are you posting? Are, are you on CDOC still posting like occasionally here and there? I'm not just because I don't have the CERAC anymore. So, so here's the backstory on my CERAC. I love it. it I, I used it a ton. Um, you know, it made me a ton of money, but I was limited in my facility space to ba basically two doctor ops. So when I was oh. doing 20 to 30 crowns a month, it was a great fit because yes. I would just while one person's milling and sitting there, I would hop over and do a crown in the other room. Then we got really, really busy and I didn't even have places to put people. So having that person even sitting in an op for an hour was killing me. 
And it kind of became a deal like, okay, well, if I've got to, if I've got to bring them back anyway, I'd just almost rather not have to mess with the milling or anything. Yes. Just and it's back to impressions and, and it was fine. And patients didn't notice a whole lot, but it wasn't an anti serac thing. Right. No, so, no, no. It's kind of subjective, but if you can't work laterally, either that or if you're working so busy laterally, otherwise you're going to have a tough time making, because sometimes people say, will Sarek work for me? My, one of my first questions is how many ops do you have? And if they say three sure. and I go, is one of, you know, is it just two doc ops and one hygiene? I don't know if that's going to work. That's the exact scenario I ran into. If I had right. eight ops and it was just me working and I could have one of those sitting there filled and park someone somewhere. Sure. Yeah, I mean, who cares? Then it makes all the sense in the world. I just didn't have that. Yep. And the numbers didn't work for me to build. So we just, we went back and, um, you know, now there's been some changes in, in all the in-office stuff where if I could, I would probably go back and get back into milling now with just some open source systems, but I still wouldn't be trying to do it same day. I would probably be doing next or second day dentistry with sure. Um But yeah, there's there's just so many different options in all that. Yeah. No, that's cool. And, you know, I, I read about your, your journey with that too, showing more that I'm a creeper on multiple levels because I, you know what though, you have thousands of creepers. If, <laughs> if, if that doesn't flatter you and worry you all at the same time, oh, but you I've, know. I've been asking for it, I guess, cause I put it right. on the internet. So, right. So, um, how about uh dental town? You, you posted on that much. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely still use dental town. Uh, that I owe a huge debt to them that really has built my career in speaking right. and teaching and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. Cause I see your courses on that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I do that. I still do Facebook and, um, yep. I, you know, I've gotten to where I post a lot on YouTube too, just uh, yep. put the videos up on that. Uh, do you happen to know your YouTube channel or do you do it through? Yeah, it's, just in, it's just my name in Corey Glenn. And Cor in what's the Nathan. end Nate? Uh, Nathan. Yeah. Ah, three, I called it three first names. Yeah. Go by the middle one. So it's real confusing. Well, that's a kind of a Southern thing too. It seems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Hey, I remember, uh, you know, uh, to get like, go from joking to serious real quick, but I remember gravely praying for you when you started going through your health issues. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. And, and first of all, thank you for that. I, I know there was a lot of people praying for me and, and I absolutely had a great effect, but yeah. So 2015, you know, we were, we were really growing, um, was super, super busy at the practice, the speaking and teaching and all that had taken off. And man, by the end of the year, I was just miserable, worn out. Um, I, I was really way overdoing it with work. I was, uh, you know, not sleeping enough. I was eating terrible, not exercising, just way overworking and neglecting uh, a lot of other important things. So yeah. you a type a, Oh, big time. No. I was, I was just playing. a whole night trying to figure out some kind of digital technique and mesh mixers. I know it was ridiculous, but, um, anyway, that kind of at the end of 2015, I got to really feeling bad and I had my hand lock up during an extraction one day, just cramped up around the forceps and I couldn't get it undone. So I was like, well, I guess I gotta go to the doctor. So I uh, went and, you know, just, basic exam they couldn't tell a whole lot but took blood work and all that and just said hey you're overdoing it you're working too much and so three days later though I got the call back and they they received my blood work and I uh, had pancytopenia which means like all my my blood cells white blood cells my platelets all of that stuff was just virtually non-existent and they didn't know what it was but said that they uh rescheduled my follow-up appointment with them for me to go to Tennessee Oncology and that I needed to be prepared for a bone marrow biopsy. So was this going to be in Knoxville maybe? No, this was just in the next town over in Tullahoma. But okay. you know, basically they didn't know what it was, but all indications pointed towards something really serious like a, a blood cancer. And so, oh. uh, you know, really rocked my world and, uh, you know, put into perspective what was important very quickly for me. And, uh, you know, ended up being leukemia, went into the hospital. I did eight months of chemo and pretty much had to put all the practice and everything aside. Um, and thankfully, you know, I ended up having a really uh, rare subtype, which used to be the most deadly and now it's the most curable. It's called APL leukemia, um, but very good prognosis and I'm all good from that. Um, but, you know, I kind of had ongoing issues with my back. My back and that cramping were the two reasons I finally went to the doctor. The back pain, though, never got better after the, the chemo and, and beating the cancer. And eventually, I tried going back and just wasn't able to do it. I mean, I'd see two patients and have to be taking oxycodone. And so, we, 
eventually figured out that that wasn't going to improve, especially with, you know, how Dennis. How You're going to be a Dr. House. Sure. Right. <laughs> so I was going to have to to switch gears. So thankfully I did have uh, disability insurance and I did have um, this other stuff going on, the, the blue sky uh, right. training and teaching and all that. So went to work for blue sky, kind of shifted my focus towards teaching and, and working for them. And uh, eventually Where's, where is blue sky based out of? Uh, everywhere. We, we actually don't have a physical location. Where are the implants Correct. made? California? They're in the U.S., uh, but we don't own the facilities. There's basically a couple of facilities that make okay. most people's implants in the U.S. And so uh, we use those along with most of the other companies. But, yeah, we, uh, we're just a virtual company, so we have a fulfillment center where the product is stored. But other than that, we all work remotely. You're uh, kind of like Amazon, yeah, I mean, it's that's kind of the idea. And honestly, that's how we keep our prices what they are. We're not yeah. paying for big buildings and putting on these huge meetings and all that kind of stuff. Million foot just, warehouses. Yeah, right. that just enables us to pass those savings along. So, but uh, you have to admit, Serona throws a cool party. Oh, yeah, they do. They <laughs> definitely throw a good party. Um, hey, so I remember there was a point on your Facebook that you were posting that – and this was during the process. I thought that you said, okay, they found out that it's not cancer. Wasn't there a time when you were, when no, you were, it was, it was that the other way around. Yeah, it was, the, it was the other way around for a while. We didn't know what it was. Yes. But then we did find out it was cancer. And then we also, uh, you, what you're probably referring to is I was initially told I had AML, which is a really poor prognosis. Oh, okay. About a 30% chance of living uh, to five years at my age group. So that's what I had, but then they resubtyped it, and I had this odd kind of AML called APL. And okay. That's when it was kind of like, oh man, my my prognosis just went way up uh, when that happened, just because of the genetic treatments they've got available for APL. Wow, that's awesome. So it it re I mean, this is something that's cool about our podcast too, is that we're not talking strictly cl- clinical. So uh, that's the reason why I asked you about this was a lot of times people, especially with you want to tech out. But one of the things that we like doing is talking about the the balance in life. And why don't you tell me about your family and uh, some of the stuff? Because I, I imagine that this helped you refocus your values. Oh, tremendously. Yeah. It's like not re, you know, refocused. It, it helped, you know, get, get a pinpoint accuracy that this is what matters more in life. Yes, uh, absolutely. So, you know, I've got three beautiful daughters, a uh, wife of, I think 12 years now that oh. are amazing. Um, but, you know, at the time of my diagnosis, the reason I got so run down is because I was just purely all about work. Yeah. And it's not, you know, it wasn't all about just making money. I mean, I literally just loved it. It was so interesting to me. I I was, uh, you know, to be on the cutting edge of something, it's just, it's fun. It's interesting. And so I was just busting it and burning it both ends, trying to do those things. But I I was doing it at the expense of, again, sleep, exercise, but I was also doing it at the expense of time with my kids and my wife, um, or at least quality time. Even if I was with them, I was probably on my laptop trying to figure out how to, you know, do Boolean subtractions or something stupid. So right. the, the quality of, of time that was with my family was not the best. And, um, you know, again, it just, it caught up with me. And, and from the moment I got diagnosed until uh, that next few days, that was probably some of the richest days of my life because yes. for the first time in, in forever, um, I just, didn't care whatsoever about uh, work, about notoriety or anyone knowing who I am or taking my course. Or, that stuff just was so worthless. It just didn't even matter whatsoever because all that did matter was, you know, relationships with my kids. Right. God, hey, all- Corey, I know that you have, what, is it three daughters? Yeah, you know, three daughters. You know, you know how everyone just, just found out that you had three daughters and you don't That's even a- realize it? You just said for the first time in forever. <laughs> from frozen yeah, from for the frozen. first time in i've heard that a few times uh-huh and so, i'm sure sometimes you've just gonna i'm just gonna let it go and you just go wow it just popped up in my mind because i've got two girls too and it's just like wow so when you said the first time in forever i thought oh no you did it yeah, it's it's creeping it just in slips out mind, doesn't it mind, yeah yes <laughs> for the first anyway, time you know, that forever. that was just a it was a big wake-up call and you know, I, I definitely recommend cancer if you can have it for uh, <laughs> orienting your priorities, as long as you can get a really good curable type. Um, because, man, there's nothing like facing your own mortality to, to really 
force you to say, okay, this is important. This can wait, you know, and, and that's really what it did for me. Corey, I don't know if you saw, but uh, on my Facebook, it was uh, about two years ago, two two years, two months ago that I was in that burn accident on my burn pile. And mm-hmm. you, know, I'm, you might be too busy to have noticed, but uh, yeah, so I was, uh, I got, I had a gasoline fire and, yeah. uh, and so that was a, along the same line, even though it was just more of an instance, you know, in an acute moment, as opposed right. to a period of worry and waiting that you went through. Right. Uh, but it also helped me figure out you know what, there's, I mean, I want to kill it when I'm at work, but I also want to find balance uh, to life that work is just a, a good, healthy proponent of the whole. You right. Know? Yeah. So, so tell me w- working out, uh, what are you up to now these days? I mean, cause your back, your back doesn't back, work. Yeah. The back is still a, a pretty serious ongoing problem. In fact, right. in some ways it's actually worse now than you mm. know, when I finished treatment. So I'm somewhat limited, um, you know, throughout hunting season, most of my exercise comes in the form of just, you know, hiking up and down mountains. Getting out in trees. Yeah, um, but, you know, hunting season just ended, so I need to get back on some kind of, uh, you know, regimen of just light weights and stuff. You know, the, the most helpful thing, for me at least, with the back stuff is uh, anything where I'm hanging. So uh, back exercises like pull-ups and whatnot, those are really, really helpful because that seems to be the only thing that stretches the, the mid-back area where my problems are. You ever tried an uh, inverter? Yeah, I've got one, but it, it stretches your lower back. All the weight's hanging from your lower back, and you don't really have any weight above. You know, when you're upside down, the only weight hanging from your mid-back is your head, which is not that heavy. Yeah. That's where my problems are. So the hanging from my arms, where it puts the, the weight from the mid-back down is my legs, and all that kind of stuff is more helpful for me. Very cool. Well, that's something that a lot of us dentists have to think about is our backs are mortal <laughs> as we oh, are, yeah. but you know yeah. that we, we have a service life and I don't care if that's age 75 or if it's age 35, at some point it's, it's going to be weaker and give out and we might be in our prime at a certain point, but it's going to give out and you know, we're just limited. We have to make the most of it while we can, but not overdo it and keep it healthy too. Yeah. And I, you know, it seems to be the trend that most of us, get out and have that degree. And, you know, the name of the game is to conquer the world by tomorrow. And so, you know, you put in these crazy hours and go to every CE under the sun and and that's all great and everything. But man, I think there's, I think there's more value into the longevity of your practice than trying to, you know, you know, make several million in your first three years (laughs) burning yourself out because man, you, you know, what good does it do if you retire early and you hurt too bad to enjoy anything? And so, you don't have a family in your household because exactly, they don't. Exactly. Right? So I think for sure there's value in just pacing yourself. Do all that stuff, but don't feel like you got to have it done by tomorrow. Hey, I want the listeners to know along with you, because I haven't told you this, but I saw in your uh, little confessional that you cut your hair with a Floby. Oh, Yeah. Here's the deal. I want to tell you something. I cut my own hair too, and I've done it since college, and uh, I love it. I I, 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 I saw that. Time, I was, every time yeah. I lose my haircut, and I would realize it, like I got to fly out the next day, and it's like, and it's hey, 11 p.m. at night. They're closed. So yes. Dude, and, so and really, after a few times, it only takes you 10 minutes. Yep. And then, yeah. you know, when I go to work, uh, my hygienist will say, "Hey, you missed a hair in the back," and they'll just pull out some scissors. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. I mean, listen, I'm not winning any beauty pageants. No, so, I, I mean, I'm not trying to put you down, but I'm just speaking for myself. Listen, we're both married, right? Yeah. We just, we want to look good, but you can only, you know, put lipstick on a pig so much. Exactly. <laughs> um, I also saw that you uh, like doing photography. I do as well. Tell me about that. Yeah. I, uh, you know, what I, kind of stuff I, you like doing. Uh, I love, you know, photographing my travels stuff. So the, the teaching courses and whatnot has, has afforded me the opportunity to go to a lot of places. And so I love having those pictures to look back on, you know, five years out from when I did that. So I've taken a lot of photography of just scenery and, and odd things on, on trips. And then, of course, our family trips, we do a lot of stuff on that. But that's, I like landscape and all that kind of stuff, but just mainly my focus has been just documenting stuff that we mementos. Do. Yeah, exactly. Very cool. All mm-hmm. right. The, the third trifecta completion that, that maybe you and I are doppelganger twins. I play bass too. Oh, do you really? Yeah. Nice. 
<laughs> yeah, so yeah, when I come I, down, yeah. you you need to hop on the guitar and I'll uh, – do you do banjo at all? I don't do banjo, no. The, Shoot, the I was hoping to maybe game. get a duet recorded. You know, I would you, love to. I love some banjo, but, yeah, I've not, I've not delved into that any. Are you originally from Tennessee or, or was it Memphis Arkansas. or something like that? Arkansas, Arkansas, that's it. Yeah, so, okay. Which part of Arkansas were you from? Uh, Jonesboro. So it's about an hour from Memphis. Okay, yes. Northeast corner. Yep. Okay, gotcha. Um, uh, I have two last questions for you. One is going to be a hard-hitting blue sky question. Okay. Why, why are my Strawman 4.1 by 10s on back order? <laughs> okay, so long long story. But they're not Strawman. They're Quattros, right? Well, fine. My Strawman oh, compatible. No. Quattro, yes. Yes. So, uh, basically, the... They're too popular. Well, it's, they are super popular, but we actually ran into a, a little issue with uh, back orders on a number of products because the the company that does our anodizing, so, you know, they get machined and then they've got to be anodized, color-coded and everything. So, the anodizer, who basically us and pretty much everyone uses, developed a quality control issue and then all of a sudden, like a, a tremendously large batch of implants that we had just had to be tossed. And Tossed? So, yeah, and we can keep you them. buy them for two dollars a piece. No, they just had to be tossed. And so, where, where is the where is that dumpster? <laughs> I don't know. It would have been nice to have. But yeah, so that put us way back because even though we do maintain, uh, we stay way ahead of our orders. We're also growing at such a fast rate that even those got exhausted pretty quickly. So anyway, that uh, that now is behind us, and we've caught up on pretty much everything. But that was the root of that issue. All right. So hopefully that was fair enough of a question. Here's my other question. And this is something that we ask for uh, all the contestants here on everyday practices. All right. <laughs> all right. So first word that comes to mind, I'm going to give you two words. You have to choose one or the other. Ready? Okay. Bacon or eggs? Bacon. Bacon. That's it. That's Easy. a good t- Tennessee boy there. Yeah. So I'll tell you what, next time I'm up uh, in North Dakota with Lindell Kemet, I'm looking forward to inviting you up if you can make it. But of course, uh, I know that you like finding balance. I appreciate you coming on uh, this episode of Everyday Practices. Corey, it's been a big pleasure. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Bring your lunch or take us to the gym again next week to improve your everyday practices. Also, subscribe on iTunes, follow us on social media, and sign up for our email list. Now get out there and win with everyday practices.